Baruch Hashem, I have the great schut here, I and we at Yeshivat HaKotel, of being able to appreciate the miracles of Yom Yerushalayim 51 years ago, more than most people in the world. Because I get to learn here, I get to spend most of my life here, and I get to feel closeness with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The question is, what does that mean for us in today's world to be able to be here? So Yom Yerushalayim, of course, commemorates, I believe, two things. It commemorates the Six-Day War, but more importantly, it commemorates the result of the Six-Day War. Before we get to the result, it's important for us to appreciate what was so special about the Six-Day War. So obviously, like Yom Ha'atzmut, we're commemorating another tremendous salvation. People aren't familiar enough with the tension that existed before the Six-Day War, the fears people had, the digging of graves, mass graves for tens of thousands in public parks, the fear of another Holocaust. The story told about someone who met Rav Soloveitchik, Rav David Miller, in the Gruss Kolel. Um, before the Six-Day War, he went to Israel to volunteer, and Rav Soloveitchik said, when you're in Israel, you may see my son, my only son, and Dr. Chai, today, Dr. Chaim Soloveitchik said, if you see him, Please tell him I love him because I don't know if I'll see him again. That's how fearful people were before the Six Day War. So it's, of course, a tremendous Yeshua, but also tremendous miracles of not just the salvation, but what was accomplished through the war. And I think it's not just the salvation, but a new level, a climax of the first stage of developing the state of Israel. In 1948, a state was successfully founded, but Yerushalayim was outside of it. Kota was outside of it. And people felt this, this chaser. The Rabbanut Rashid of Eretz Yisrael instituted Hala without a bracha in 1949. And one of the major reasons was because Yerushalayim was not included in the state. It was something major that was incomplete. And they said, when Yerushalayim will be included, we'll reconvene to talk about Hala with a bracha. And of course, 1972-73, after Yerushalayim was included in the state, after the Six-Day War, they instituted saying Hallel with a bracha. But the question is, why is the reunification of Yerushalayim so important to us? So obviously, first of all, it's the history of the Jewish people here, beginning with Avram Avinu Le'akeda, David, Shlomo. Last year, when UNESCO passed one of its resolutions, uh, talking about how the Jewish people do not have a connection with Israel, a reporter came here to interview me about <coughs> that question reporter asked me, how does it feel to be declared an alien here? So I took the reporter under where we're sitting right now, underground the foundations of the yeshiva. When they were digging the foundations, they found the homes of the Kohanim from Bayat Sheni. They knew they were the homes of the Kohanim because they found mikvot in each home. And I explained to the reporter that the Caucasians arrived in the United States 1620, in England 1066. In Israel, the Jewish people have been living here for thousands of years, and I know what I'm on top of. I know where I come from and where I belong. This is why the Jewish people still exist, why we didn't assimilate, how we returned after 2,000 years to this place. The Jews carried with them a memory of the past, the Tisha B'avs, the Imesh Kachech at Smachot, a very famous story they tell about Napoleon, whether true or not, expresses a beautiful idea that he was passing through a Jewish town on Tisha B'av, and he heard that they were sitting on the floor mourning. And he clarified what it was, and they explained to him, mourning from the temple, it's 1,800 years earlier, and he said, a people who remember their past so strongly clearly have a bright future. <clears throat> but I think it's more than just the memory of the past. Many people have histories. What makes us special is that we've always seen ourselves as a real continuation of the past. Beit Mikdash and the Kotel weren't just a reminder of the past, they were what we saw as our future, as opposed to the pantheon that for Greeks was part of their past and irrelevant to their future. Jews always saw their past as their future. That's how we begin and end the Pesach Seder. L'shan habob Arad Yisrael, l'shan habob Yerushalayim. A past is only relevant if it's the mission for a future. And that's why the Jews continue to exist of the hopes of that future. The Kotel was maybe the best embodiment of it, maybe less holy than the Harabite, but never usurped. Nothing was ever built out of it, maybe built up to it, over it. It was our place. It remained our place. We cried in Torah Kriya, 
for this pristine remnant of our past that we yearn for in our future and so to be able to return to the kotel meant for the jewish people for us the actualization of that past that we believed was our future i think the most important thing to speak about for yom yerushalayim is what all this means moving forward <clears throat> the relevant important questions we need to be asking ourselves are um, what the kotel should mean as a place for our tefillot today and i think it should mean things that are like the past but different than the past in the past the kotel was a place we dot in for the future today it needs to be first and foremost a place we express appreciation for what we've already experienced thanks for the present as a basis for tefillot for the future when our ancestors davened in poland and iraq they had very little in the present to use as a basis for believing in the future we have it we have so much to be appreciative for so much that would have given them such great pleasure and faith that should be the basis of our praying and appreciation and hopes for the future and the question is number one what do we look for in the future so many Jews around the world and in Israel hope for peace and tranquility, and definitely we live in a time where those prayers are well warranted. But we, we seek much more. We seek a complete return to the full past. Not just the Shana above Yerushalayim, but also of Yerushalayim, Yerucha, Viracha, Bim Tashuv, Sheibane, Beit HaMikdash, Bim Herbi, Amenu. All this as a basis for Chadei Shiyamenu Kikedem. We have to avoid making the mistake of thinking that all this is just about safety, and a safe haven for the Jewish people. We have to appreciate the miracles as a basis for realizing that there's so much more that we're here for. If we lose sight to what our ancestors were dreaming of because we've come a third of the way, we make a terrible mistake. And the second important point is, how do we get there? How do we return to Chadesh Yemen Kikeden? And like I said earlier, like our ancestors in Poland and Iraq, we have to understand that it's Torah, mitzvot, avodat Hashem, that merits not just our return, but our ability to return to the past of what we need to be in the future. We need to believe more. We'd be able to do more. Our faith needs to be stronger than people who had so much less basis to believe. We've seen Hashem's miracles. We have to be inspired by those miracles and the gifts to believe in Him more, to commit ourselves more. Um, the translation of all this, I believe, is our aim is the full return to our glorious past and the future, the near future. We believe that we can get there, not just doing by doing what we did in the past, but by responding to the events and the miracles of the present and helping move it all forward. This is part of what we mean when we talk about Torah Eretz Yisrael, a Torah inspired not only by our past, but also by what's happening in the miraculous present, and what we're working towards in the future. Torah Eretz Yisrael believes, Suri Yisrael Kuma Bi'ezrat Yisrael, that the rock of Israel gets up with the help of the Jewish people, and that we're in a stage where we need to work together with HaKadosh Baruch Hu on moving to the next stages of the Gula. This is what it means to learn opposite the Kotel, to wake up every morning in full view of Hashem's benevolence to us, the miracles He's done on our behalf, you wake up every morning to the miraculous return of our people to our past. You wake up every morning to Jewish history. Whether you live and learn here or not, it's all ours, Baruch Hashem. And what we celebrate on Yom Yerushalayim is what Yerushalayim has always symbolized for the Jewish people and the great schut we have to be living this past and, and the future. And while we celebrate, we have to make sure we reflect not only what Hashem did for us, but more importantly, the relevance for ourselves and what we need to do in response. Let's make sure to reflect on that in this Yom Yerushalayim so that next year we can celebrate in the Gula Shalema. Yom Yerushalayim Sameach.